What's going on, Broncos country? Welcome on into the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here breaking down the latest injury news going into this Week 16 matchup on Christmas Eve night against the New, or uh, New Orleans, the New England Patriots. And we're going to break down the Bill Belichick versus Sean Payton matchup at the end of the show. But quick plug here to join our Week 16 watch party. I told my family... I can't come home for Christmas. I've got Broncos football to watch with you guys. So we're doing a watch party on Christmas Eve, but we need to get 20 subscribers so my family doesn't think I'm an actual loser for not coming home. So help us get to 19,300 subscribers if you have not already joined the channel. Now the injury report for Week 16 just came out, and Nick Benito is probably the biggest name on it. He did not practice with a knee injury. We'll talk more about that later on. Greg Dulcich also did not practice as a hamstring, and now a foot injury is keeping him off the field, and really feels like we might never see Greg Dulcich again. Jonathan Cooper was limited with an ankle injury. It would be very bad if Denver did not have Benito and Cooper. And finally, a name that we might not be too familiar with, but rookie offensive tackle in UDFA, Alex Palchewski. He was activated off injured reserve, so that opened up his 21-day practice window. He's dealing with a knee injury. In fact, I know it's just some UDA, UDFA offensive lineman, but I was thinking about him like a week ago thinking, whatever happened to him? Because he was really good in the preseason, injured his hand slash his finger in the final preseason game, Denver snuck him onto their 53-man roster, put him on IR the next day, opened up a roster spot, and I thought, all right, a finger or hand injury probably won't keep him out for too long. Well, it's kept him out all the way until now, but except Denver's saying it's a knee injury now, so I'm not quite sure how it changed from a hand injury to a knee injury. But let's talk about Nick Benito, the team's sack leader who missed Week 15 with an MCL knee injury. But Benito, with the seven sacks, has been a little bit cool, cold lately. He's only had one and a half sacks in the last nine weeks. However, Denver's pass rush has been a pass rush by committee, right? You got Benito leading the way with seven sacks, but Baron Browning and Jonathan Cooper and Zach Allen, they're all right there with him. So if one guy in the committee is down, well, you don't have that superstar that might take over. But let's give Benito some love because what looked to be maybe like, I don't know if you can call a second round pick a bus, but what was not a very inspiring rookie season, we'll say, has been anything but that in year two, right? Jumping from one and a half sacks to seven sacks, 11 tackles for loss, 27 tackles altogether. Benito has put together a really promising sophomore campaign, and hopefully we have more years of this to come. Now, like I was saying, it's been a... Pass rush by committee group. Allen, Browning, Cooper, Benito. Ever since they moved on from Randy Clark and Frank Gregory, these four guys have taken over the uh, pass rushing group here. Did I, say, did I say the opposite? Okay, Randy, Gregory, and Frank Clark. My bad, guys. Um, but the Denver defensive line, the front five all together, it doesn't have a ton of depth. You've got these five players that we've been talking about, four players in addition with DJ Jones. But after that, you don't have a whole lot of help coming off the bench. And this has been Denver's fear, right? When they moved on from Randy Gregory and Frank Clark, they knew they were playing with fire a little bit in case something happened to Cooper, Browning, or Benito. And now something has happened to Benito. So fingers crossed Denver can get him back sooner rather than later. My personal opinion is I don't think we're going to see him on Sunday against New England, but hopefully we see him the next Sunday against the Chargers on New Year's Eve. But grade the Broncos' edge rushers, specifically those three guys, Benito, Browning, and Cooper. How would you grade them, A, B, C, D, or F? Let me know down in the comment section. For me, I think it's probably a B. I think Denver's going to add to that room. But I think that room is young and promising enough to go, it might not have to be your biggest priority in free agency or the draft. Denver showed last offseason they have no problem spending money. They spent more money than anyone else did. But I do think Denver might not have free agent, excuse me, might not have edge rusher as their biggest priority in free agency, right? I don't think they're going to put out a huge 70 plus million dollar contract 
like they did for Randy Gregory. I don't think they're going to attack edge rusher in round one of the draft. I think they might add a mid-round pick to the edge rusher group. I think they might add a lower-level free agent signing, but go into next year with Browning, Benito, and Cooper as their top three guys, and I can get behind that. Now, like I was saying, we have some other injury news to talk about here. Greg Dulcich, I, I really want to see him come back and play at some point, but I'm not too optimistic that we are going to get Greg Dulcich back on the field really anytime soon. He missed week 15 with now a foot injury after missing the previous two months with a hamstring injury. Remember, he went down after week one, and then he came back a few weeks later. He played two or three snaps and was like, this ain't happening, guys. I'm out of here. And then he came back for practice last week, but then a foot injury popped up, and that kept him out of the Lions game. But in a small sample size, Dulcich has been a really good receiving tight end, and that's exactly what this offense needs. Like Adam Trotman's doing a really solid job, and that's exactly what I said yesterday, and it's what I'll say again today. Solid. Nothing to write home about, but not a hideous disaster that needs to get off the field. But hopefully Greg Dulcich can find a way back to the field, whether it's this year or next year. But soft tissue injuries that come back over and over again, well, those are kind of the kiss of death for athletes. And they usually don't happen until the end of your career, right? When you're into your 30s and whatnot, not in year two. So it's very worrisome, in my opinion, that Dulcich is having these reoccurring hamstring injuries so early in his NFL career. Before we get on to the rest of today's show, a special shout out to our awesome sponsor, which is Prize Picks. Now, here's how Prize Picks works all you guys got to do is select two to six players and then pick more or less on their projected stats from Prize Picks. The more players you select, the more potential winnings. So I went with four players for Sunday. I'm taking the more on Josh Allen and Gabriel Davis, who have goblin totals. What are goblin totals? Well, prize picks for the holidays is doing demons and goblins. Demons have tougher projected stats to reach, but a bigger payout if they do reach them. Goblin has lower stats to reach, not as big of a payout, but when you add in Raheem Mostert and Tony Pollard, you could come home with a good you know, uh, corner of cash right there. So go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS for a first-time deposit match up to $100. That link is in the comments and description of today's video. Prize Picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. Let's talk about this Week 16 matchup in Denver between the Broncos and the Patriots, which... At the beginning of the year, that sounded like it could be a really good matchup. Now, not so much. But if there is one thing that I think Bill Belichick is still a master at, it is finding a team's biggest weakness and then exposing it. Or finding a team's biggest strength and taking it away. And for Denver, their biggest strength has got to be Cortland Sutton through the air. He's got 10 touchdowns this season, 770 yards. He is the offense in a lot of ways. And if you take Cortland Sutton away, it's going to make life very difficult. So let's run through some of the tape here. I want to show you guys what I mean. Because Cortland Sutton has 10 touchdowns this year, a lot of which have come in the red zone. In fact, if we roll the tape from Saturday's game in Detroit, you can see the Lions with D.C. Aaron Glenn were prepared for Cortland Sutton in the red zone. Here they've got him double teamed. All right, Move on to the next play here. Cortland Sutton, he can't even get to the line of scrimmage without two Lions defenders just standing right in front of him. Ball was snapped, two guys right on top of him, taking him out of the play. And then you've got him trying to get free in the end zone, and Detroit's got him bracketed off. Two defenders on him. So I think Bill Belichick is going to watch this tape and go, oh, the Lions were able to shut down Cortland Sutton pretty much in the red zone and really reduce Denver's passing game because they double-teamed him, well, that sounds exactly like what we're going to do here. So this is going to be a bit of a chess match for Sean Payton to figure out a way to get Cortland Sutton free, or can he find someone else in the passing game? Can Jerry Judy really step up to the plate if Cortland Sutton is bracketed off by Bill Belichick, who is sort of the pioneer of you've got a star-wide receiver, 
we're going to take that star wide receiver away by double teaming him and putting our best cornerback on your second best wide receiver. And now you got nothing going here. But who you got this week? Patriots or Broncos? I want to say Denver. I'm going to say Denver. But I am a little weary that there is blood in the water. And there's a lot of bad tape out there for the Broncos. And the Lions really did a number on, hey, you want to beat Denver? Here's how you do it. Double-team Cortland Sutton and speed on offense. I mean, think about Denver's two worst losses this year. Miami and Detroit, two of the fastest teams in the NFL. Can the Patriots figure out how to use that against the Broncos? Now, the one positive news I'll say is Denver's biggest strength this year has been takeaways. And one of the Patriots' biggest weaknesses this year have been turnovers, right? The takeaways should return after, in the last three or four weeks, we saw zero takeaways against Houston, zero takeaways against Detroit, and 0-2 in those two games. But the Pats have turned the ball over 22 times this year. That's bottom 10 in the league. And like I was saying, Denver's record, when they force two or more takeaways, they're 6-1. and one. But when the Broncos don't get more than one takeaway, they are 1-6. and six. It is feast or famine for the Broncos when it comes to takeaways. But this game's going to be a chess match between Sean Payton and Bill Belichick, right? Two of the best coaches to ever coach the game. Two Hall of Fame NFL coaches. And they have squared off four times in their career. AFC, NFC playing every four years back then. And they are even as pie. Two to two. Sean Payton did win the last duel back in 2021, 28 to 13. Bill Belichick won the previous two, and Sean Payton won in 2009, 38-17. So we'll see who wins this fifth episode of Sean Payton and Bill Belichick on Sunday night. That's going to do it for us on today's show. Make sure to subscribe. That way you do not miss our watch party Christmas Eve against New England. We'll see you all later.